Dragons to DNN. I'm Danica with your school news. Please remember to follow our school safety guidelines at all times. This includes, but is not limited to, wearing your mask properly, keeping a dragon distance apart, and sanitizing your hands constantly. These safety measures have been put in place for not only your safety, but for the safety of all of our fellow dragons. All students should now have their school ID on a lanyard. Please arrive at school each day with it around your neck. If you forget your ID or misplace it during the day, please go to the media center to receive a new one. Replacement IDs will be issued at the cost of $5. Brick and mortar students must remember to fill out the Dragons on the Go form before leaving the classroom. This form can be found on every teacher's Google Classroom page. School yearbooks are now online for purchase at www.yearbookforever.com. Please visit this website to get a yearbook for this school year. Grade six brick and mortar students will participate in a vision and hearing screening on Thursday, February 18th and Friday, February 19th. Monday, February 15th is President's Day. President's Day is one of 10 federal holidays and it is celebrated on the third Monday in February. It is on this day because it is between the birthdays of two of the best presidents of all time, Abraham Lincoln and George Washington. Lincoln was born on February 12, 1809, and Washington was born on February 22, 1732. Celebrate President's Day by doing president-themed activities, such as learning about a president, memorizing the presidents, or doing other president or America-themed activities. From George Washington to Joe Biden, make sure you honor all of our many presidents in the history of this nation on Monday. I'm Ryan, reporting for DNN. During the month of February, National Junior Honor Society will be sponsoring a drive to benefit Sophia's Hope. They will be collecting character band-aids to bring a smile to faces knowing that their favorite characters are helping them on the journey. Dum Dum Lollipops to give, a to give as a treat for being so brave. And boxes of tissues to help dry little tears while receiving treatment. You may turn in your donations to the main office or room 160 or 165. To learn more about Sophia's Hope, visit their website at www.sophiashope.org. Lots of kids every day are impacted by ADHD. ADHD stands for Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. It's a mental health disorder that normally hurts your attention span and it has lots of other effects. Lots of my peers or people around me that suffer from it show me how it usually affects you. During school, it might distract you from the lesson being taught in class. ADHD might make you hyperactive and impulsive and it can hinder your organizational skills. Let's take a look at Lindsay's story. Hi, my name is Lindsay and welcome to my life. I have attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, also known as ADHD. You might have heard it before, maybe from your psychology class, your friend, or even online. At some point in your life, I'm sure you've had difficulty sitting still in lecture, paying attention while studying, or being engaged in impulsive behaviors. However, when these behaviors persist over time, they become signs of ADHD, a neurodevelopmental condition. ADHD affects various aspects of my life. Typically, I have trouble focusing and can become easily distracted. This is known as inattentiveness. I also have trouble sitting still for short periods of time, known as hyperactivity. I've been told that I can get impulsive at times. Often, my body acts before my mind, which can lead to unwise decision making, inability to ignore danger, and inability to learn from previous mistakes. But what's really ticking in my head to make me, well, me? ADHD can be explained by physiological and neurochemical mechanisms. This is my doctor, Dr. Miranda. She can tell you more about some treatments I've done and I'm using now. Hi, Lindsay. There are two general types of treatments for ADHD that treat different aspects of ADHD, pharmacological and psychosocial treatments. So what do each of these treatments address? Great question. Pharmacological treatments have more of a direct impact on the neurochemistry side of ADHD, as discussed earlier. Medications like amphetamines are stimulants. 
Stimulants are the most effective treatment for ADHD and have a responsiveness rate of 70 to 80 percent. What they do is they block reabsorption of dopamine and norepinephrine so they keep their levels high. How about psychosocial treatments you mentioned? So cognitive behavioral therapy or CBT is a type of psychosocial treatment that can be done individually or in groups. CBT is designed to promote self-controlled behaviors through self-reflection and control strategies like time management. So an advantage of group therapy is that it allows children the opportunity to improve their behaviors without the use of medication. It is actually the preferred method for children under the age of seven because before this age, you haven't yet fully developed your um, self-regulation abilities. Wow, thank you for making everything clearer in terms of choice of treatments. I personally find CBT helpful for myself, but everyone is different. Yeah, absolutely, Lindsay. Anytime you or your friends have any questions, always feel free to come to us, we can help you out. Thanks, Doc. Have a great day. Although lots of kids suffer from this disorder, many students might not even know they have it. To learn more about ADHD, please visit www.chadwith2ds.org. Now, here's more news on strategies for starting this semester right with Emery. Sometimes, we just need new beginnings. Whether last semester was good or bad, you should try to make this semester your best yet. So to help you out, I'll be sharing five tips to for a new start this semester. Number one, get organized now. Being organized makes everything else easier. You can download a planner or calendar on your phone. This will allow you to put all your assignments due dates into your planner so you know when it's due and what is due. You can also check your to-do list in Google Classroom to make sure you're on top of all of your assignments. Number two, pay attention in class. Even if you're physically in class all the time, make sure you're there mentally. I know it's tough to pay attention all the time, but if you're not paying attention in class, it's like you're not even there. Number three, study effectively. Find a way of studying that will keep you focused and that will help you remember class information. It's always better to schedule too much time for studying instead of too little. This way you won't have to pack all the information into your brain right before the big test. Number four, take good notes. It's important to take quality notes while in class. Find out the best way for you to take notes, whether it's online or in a notebook. And finally, number five, continue to work hard. If you really want to have a fresh start this semester, make the effort. Sometimes school will be difficult and you won't always understand everything you're learning. But the important thing is to try your best and you can always ask your teachers for help. Make your best effort and let's start this semester off on the right foot. I'm Emery reporting for DNN. Hello, I'm Brandon Wigdor and this is sports. The NFL season has officially come to an end. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers beat the Kansas City Chiefs in the Super Bowl 31 to nine. Tom Brady has won a seventh Super Bowl and won his fifth Super Bowl MVP as, predict as predicted in our poll. One very cool fact is that Tom Brady has won more Super Bowls than un any other franchise in NFL history. For the Buccaneers, Tom Brady threw for 201 yards and three passing touchdowns. Rob Gronkowski also had a great game, getting six receptions for 67 yards and two touchdowns. The Brady-Gronk duo for sure showed off in the Super Bowl. For the Kansas City Chiefs, Patrick Mahomes threw for 270 yards, zero touchdowns and two interceptions. Travis Kelsey had 10 receptions for 133 yards. The Chiefs did not score a touchdown in the Super Bowl and had three field goals. On defense, the Chiefs got flagged for over 100 yards in the game. They set a Super Bowl record by allowing 95 yards in flags in the first half alone. This fla these flags led to, to two touchdowns for the Buccaneers. That's all for today. Now to Eric with Stadium Safety. Thank you, Brandon. Hi, I'm Eric Rosenblatt. And for School Safety Week, I'm going to talk about safety in sports stadiums. Most stadiums have a hired security crew, but some stadiums have the police doing security. Before you go into a stadium, you have to empty your pockets and go through a metal detector. When you go to a racing event, you are not allowed to bring glass bottles because a fan once threw a glass bottle at a NASCAR driver's car while they were racing and shattered the windshield of the car. 
Fans are also not allowed to go on the sideline of sports stadiums, even pregame, because they could harm the players or ruin the game. That's all I have. I'm Eric Rosenblatt, reporting for DNN. Hi, Dragons. We all know that Valentine's Day is right around the corner. Valentine's Day is a day to honor love and relationships. There are many myths behind the origins of Valentine's Day. One common legend is that St. Valentine defied his emperor's orders and secretly married couples in order to save their husbands from going into war. This was the brave act of love that led to Valentine's Day. How romantic, right? Some popular Valentine's Day treats are chocolate heart boxes and roses. But is that all Valentine's Day is about? Let's see the results of what the student body believed to be their favorite Valentine's Day treat. In the meantime, Sarah is out in the field asking our students and staff about their most special Valentine's Day memory. Hey everyone, my job was to find students and teachers to share their favorite Valentine's Day memory, but what I found was our middle school students haven't really made many, and most of our teachers, obviously, did not have any that fit the PG filter. But here are a few cute ones. I hope you enjoy them. Remember, Valentine's Day is really about showing love to all those you cherish and who you are special to you, whether it's your dog, your sister, or your parents. So today, February 12th, is the anniversary of my husband and I's first date. It was a Sadie Hawkins dance, which was for Valentine's Day, where the girl has to ask the boy to the dance. We were in high school, so we've been together for 36 years today, um, and we'll be married 30 years in June. That's my Valentine's story. All right, so one of the best things that's happened to me on Valentine's Day literally just happened yesterday. My new dog, Stowe, painted a picture at school. So one of my favorite Valentine's Day memories is when I sent my wife flowers on February 13th, and she asked me why I sent them. Today is not Valentine's Day, and of course I responded with, honey, every day is Valentine's Day. Hi, my favorite Valentine's day memory is when my husband and I were dating and we're almost married 30 years we ordered crab legs and he set up a little table in his parents living room and we just sat together and had some crab legs for about an hour and I just thought it was really thoughtful of him hello everyone so I'm here today which I don't usually do this but I do have a very special Valentine's Day memory that happened right here at this school. So a couple years ago, I came to work and um, it was the weekend before Valentine's Day. And I walked into an office that was filled with balloons and there were gifts on my desk. And the most interesting thing was that every balloon that was hanging above my desk had a special written note on it from my husband. Don't know when he came to the school and filled my office with balloons, but it was a very special day. And um, I think it is marked as my favorite Valentine's Day memory. Well, Dragons, that's our show. Please look out for more news in your school email. Follow our journalism class at YBKDE. Like our news and help us reach 1,000 followers. Stay safe and we'll see you when we see you. Bye.